Hello everyone and welcome to a new video on my YouTube channel Anton GF. My name is Anton Garcia Fernandez and I'm coming to you as usual from Jackson in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America. And today we have a video which is a part of the written page review series and in this case I'm going to be reviewing, I'm going to be talking about a recent young adults novel, one that I have right here and it's called Rat Rule 79 written by Rivka Galchen and this is a book that um, I got to know through my wife. My wife found it and bought it to read to our daughter and after we read it to our daughter I took it up and I read it myself and found it really interesting. In fact this is one of the best young adults novels that I've read in the last several years uh, by Rivka Galchen, Rat Rule 79 published by Restless Books in 2019 and it is really the first young adults novel by Rivka Galchen who has already written books for adults and volumes of short stories and of essays um, and Rat Rule 79 also features as you can see down there some illustrations by uh, a Los Angeles based artist uh, called Elena Megalos and um, I love the um, illustrations uh, as well. Rivka Galchen was uh, born in Canada originally but she has lived in the United States since she was a kid. She comes from an academic background and this is something that we can clearly very clearly tell from her writing and from this novel Rat Rule 79. She was an English major at Princeton and then attended medical school at Mount Sinai and later she earned an MFA at Columbia University where she has also taught and that is when her literary career, her writing career, began in earnest. Uh, she has also published uh, pieces in prestigious publications such as the New York Times or Harper's or the New Yorker and Rat Rule 79 is uh, a fantasy novel that often reminds us of uh, Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland and also it reminds us of the nonsense tradition of Edward Lear and other authors. Uh, Rivka Galchen herself has cited uh, in interviews influences such as um, Norton Juster's uh, The Phantom Tollbooth and uh, and also uh, a novel, a uh, lesser known novel by an Australian writer from the uh, early uh, 20th century, Norman Lindsay, called The Magic Pudding. And this is one that I really like myself and at some point I should bring to this series of reviews. Uh, Rat Rule 79 um, has Fred as a protagonist. She's a girl of about 12 years of age. Um, She's fed up with all the moving that she has experienced because her mom is a college professor of math. And this has something to do with uh, Galchen's uh, own experience, at least the fact that um, uh, Fred's mom is a college professor because uh, so was Galchen's own uh, father. Um, Fred in the book is always the new girl in town, the new girl in school always having to adapt herself to a new medium and she's not happy about that as uh, you may imagine she's complaining about that at the beginning of the uh, novel but one night after an argument with her mom uh, their arguments always have to do with the fact that they're moving so much uh, the fact that um, Fred's mom is so uh, into her work they also have to do with questions of logic sometimes well after one of these arguments with her mom Fred sees her mom disappear into a huge paper lantern right outside of her um, bedroom door and so dressed in her pajamas and in her slippers uh, Fred follows her through the lantern and thus reaches the land of impossibility where she will get to know some really strange but at the same time really uh, appealing characters like Downer the elephant in the room uh, Gogo the mongoose, uh, the know-it owl, uh, which is an owl that always takes every word in its uh, literal meaning, uh, the fearsome furlings, and several other 
interesting characters. This land of impossibility is, by the way, ruled by the Rat Queen, who is being held captive by these furlings, apparently. And so Fred is going to join some of the other characters that we've mentioned in an attempt to find and free the Rat Queen. And at the same time, Fred is also interested in finding her own mom in this unusual geography of the land of impossibility that she is in right now. Uh, the Rat Queen is also the uh, lawmaker in this land of impossibility and her Rat Rule 79 that you can see referenced um, in the title of uh, the book is a rule that prohibits the passage of time or at least uh, counting or keeping time banning uh, also birthdays because too many birthdays will end up killing you so the practice of keeping time is outlawed in this land of impossibility and this means of course a big change in the lives and in the customs of the inhabitants of this land of impossibility and of course it brings about many inconveniences as well uh, Galchen is thereby uh, reflecting on lawmaking and on the consequences of certain laws and certain rules which need to be borne in mind. Um, the story uh, becomes in this way also a reflection on the meaning of growing up. What does it mean to grow up from the time we are kids to becoming uh, adults? And that is another one of the ideas, that's another one of the topics explored and referenced throughout the um, novel. Gulchin plays constantly with readers' expectations in Red Rule 79 uh, and does, it, does that in many different ways. For example, by giving great importance to language and to the use of language. So there are lots and lots of puns, lots of plays on words there's a reflection on the sound, on the very sound, and on the meaning of words. And a difference is always made between the literal and the rhetorical, the metaphorical use of language and words. But not necessarily rhetorical and metaphorical in the literary sense, but just in an everyday sense, how we use language, how we use words in many cases on an everyday basis. Um, in, in a metaphorical sense uh, and there is a difference between using them in a metaphorical and a rhetorical sense and uh, in a literal uh, sense and in this um, aspect of course Lewis Carroll and Alice is in my opinion the main inner text that we have to, to, to deal with and that we have to reference when we talk about the use of language in Rad Rule 79 if you look at the chapters, for example, and this has made um, an impact on many young readers, I am sure, the chapters don't have numbers. They don't have regular titles, but they're called things like Chapter Zero, or Chapter Tuesday, or Chapter Red, and if I look at a few others, uh, you know, Chapter Thought, uh, Chapter Spoon, um, you know, Square Two, uh, real numbers, uh, chapter 1729. So she is also uh, playing with our expectations as far as the numbering and the title of chapters. And the chapters are in general rather brief. Uh, they're not very long chapters, and there are quite a few chapters in this book, but they're usually rather uh, brief. Uh, sometimes the flow of the story, which flows along really nicely, but sometimes the flow of the story is interrupted by even smaller, even briefer, even shorter chapters that tell other stories. Sometimes they even tell other stories, or they make reflections about certain ideas. But these stories and these ideas usually end up having some bearing, some definite and clear bearing on the plot or serve as commentary on something specific that's going on in the uh, plot. And I think that Galchen does that really, really well throughout Rat Rule uh, 79. Uh, the narrator is pretty interesting as well. The use of the narrator, the Galchen 
um, is making here is uh, really interesting because, interesting because the narrator addresses the reader directly sometimes. And we can often hear his or her own voice. I mean, the voice of the narrator and the opinions of the narrator. They are everywhere to be found. So we're dealing here with a mildly intrusive uh, narrator in this sense, but mm, a very effective one. Uh, one gets to hear the voice of the narrator. It's not just telling the story, but it's giving some uh, opinions, some ideas, some nuances about the story that the narrator is telling. And I think this is again done in a very effective way by Galchen throughout this uh, novel. Now, throughout the book, throughout the whole story, the idea of logic is also put into question um, over and over again. And we come up with, mm, or we come up against questions like, how can we organize our lives according to logic in an illogical land? Because that's what the land of impossibility is. It's um, an illogical land or a land, a realm that is governed by its own inner logic, which may not be, and certainly in many cases is not, the logic that uh, Fred, the protagonist, is used to. Um, how difficult do our lives become when we are in a land of impossibility where reason is chucked out the window all of a sudden? And so reason has nothing to do or very little to do uh, reason as we understand it, not reason as the characters in the land of impossibility understand it. Uh, reason is, as I said, thrown out the window and uh, characters like Fred have to survive amid this mm, land of impossibility where the logic, the reason, is different. It's given at a different scale as it would be, uh, than it would be in um, our regular uh, world. How can we use imagination as a way to navigate this unusual geography and get around impossible rules that don't really make much sense? That's something else that um, we can be thinking about as we read this um, novel. So the idea of logic in general, from the beginning of the story until the very end of the story, is constantly put into question. It's something that seems to interest the author uh, greatly. And as you re read the book, Rad Rule 79, you will see that it is a clever and intelligent story, full of humor. The humorous element is everywhere to be found throughout the story. Uh, it's a story that's always witty, it's always engaging, it's well told. And as I said at the beginning of this video, uh, Rat Rule 79 is one of the most interesting young adults novels that I have read in a while. Um, it's also a novel that features some acutely philosophical elements and this allows for several different layers of reading. Um, it's a novel that explores constantly how we represent, how we create, how we deal with the world around us through language, how we live our lives, and we um, have conversations, and we have dealings with the world around us and with the people around us by means of a language. Uh, and of course, like all good literature for children and for young adults, it can be enjoyed by young and old alike. And this is something that I always insist upon, the fact that mm, a good children's book or a good novel for young adults, it's not a book just for children. It's not a book just for young adults. It's a work that everyone, any kind of reader of any age, can also enjoy and can also benefit from um, reading. In this sense, um, it hasn't been easy to mm, get a lot of information about Rivka Galchen, unfortunately, as I was preparing for this um, video, but I did find a few interviews that 
she has given over the years and in particular there's a September 2019 interview that she gave specifically about this uh, novel and I will uh, include the link in the description of this video so you can access it if you're interested in reading the interview as well and in this interview she talked about having fun with writing and this is what she says this is Rivka Galchin talking I try to have fun with whatever I'm writing even if it's journalism my feeling is that there's a sort of transmission of energy in that way that if it was fun to write them hopefully some of that pleasure of composition carries over to the reader and there are moments in this book in Rad Rule 79 where I can tell very clearly that Rivka Galchin is really having fun as she is coming up with the story and as she is writing the uh, the story and then a little bit later on in this interview she mentions a Tom uh, she mentions a Tom Waits song I love Tom Waits a wonderful singer and songwriter American singer and songwriter she mentions a Tom Waits uh, Tom Waits song that follows an unexpected rhyming pattern this is something typical in the um, songwriting of um, uh, Tom Waits, where he sets you up for uh, a certain rhyme and then she breaks that rhyme, she uses something completely different. And uh, Galchin, after mentioning the song, uh, adds, I love to read or look at or listen to things that set up an expectation and then swerve. And this is something that uh, Galchin does over and over again constantly in this book, Rat Rule. 79 which um, as I am winding down this uh, review and finishing this video I would like to show again and of course uh, recommend to everybody out there you will be glad you did if you uh, check this book out and give it a chance and read it this is the kind of book that you will read possibly more than once for now I've only read it once but you can be sure that I'll let a few months go by and I'll come back to it uh, very much in the same way that I come back periodically to works like Dracula by Bram Stoker or uh, Alice in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll or the um, uh, Tales of Edgar Allan Poe. This is a really really interesting book and uh, it is also interesting to note that at the end of that interview Galchen mentions that she is working on a book about a hundred year old witch trial and she also is thinking of writing a detective novel for children. And I'm sure that that will be interesting, as interesting as this book that I will show for the last time, Rat Rule 79. I'll simply tell you what my uh, seven-year-old daughter, Libby, said after we finished reading this book to her. And she was entranced by the book. She said, Dad, I don't like this book. I love this book and so do I and I recommend it to everybody out there watching this video on my YouTube channel the book again is called Rad Rule 79 by Rivka Galchin with uh, illustrations by Elena Megalos and it has been published by Restless Books in the year of 2019 thanks for watching this video my name is Anton Garcia Fernandez and mine is the copyright of this video which was recorded in Jackson in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America in the month of August of the year 2020 you'll be able to watch it very soon on my YouTube channel Anton GF thank you very much for your attention and so long everybody